we're gonna ride this thing today. What's going on everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things. And today we're sort of expanding our horizons a little bit here on the channel. This is something that you would probably think I would have taken a look at before, but I actually have not. This is the first one on my channel of its kind in this electric rideable category. We are of course talking about what I'm sitting on right here, electric bicycles. And this one in particular is the first one I'm reviewing. It has a ton of features, a lot of really cool things going on with it, and chances are this is gonna be a pretty long video, so let's just jump right into it. What you're looking at right here is known as the XP, and it's coming from a company called Electric Bikes. I figured the best way to break this up would be to first talk about it as a standard bicycle. Everything is pretty standard across the board, however there are some extra features when it comes to being a bike. Like the cargo rack in the back which can hold up to 55 pounds and the metal fenders both in the front and the rear. There's a pretty cushy shock absorbing seat which is adjustable of course. And speaking of being adjustable, so are the handlebars and the ergonomic grips making this thing pretty comfortable to ride. The feature that probably stands out the most on this bike other than it being electric are the four inch anti-puncture tires. I know fat tire bikes have been becoming more popular as of recently, but I actually have not ridden one until this right here. The bike is seven speeds with traditional shifting controls. The front sprocket, however, is a fixed gear, and there are some nice looking disc brakes in both the front and the rear. There's also a bike bell too, so there's that. Now the last thing that sort of adds some additional features to a standard bicycle is that this entire thing folds up. But now we're getting into the cool stuff, which is of course the electronics. Now as far as the electric goes, this thing is powered by a 500 watt motor, which should allow me to cruise at speeds up to 28 miles per hour. It's powered by a high performance LG battery that should reach ranges of 25 to 50 miles. I'm saying that sort of skeptically because we do have to talk about those numbers as they are advertised. The large variance in those numbers is going to come down to how you actually ride this bicycle. There are five different pedal assist levels, which means as you are pedaling the bike, it will provide power to sort of help you along. And with those different levels, there is a 28 mile per hour claimed top speed when you're using the pedal assist. And there's also a hand throttle on the right hand side, which will give you a max speed of 20 miles per hour if you are solely using that. There are front and rear lights integrated into this bike, which of course run off of the battery, so you can feel a little bit safer about riding at night. And then lastly, up front, dead in center, is your heads up display. It's basically an LCD computer which shows you all of the vitals of the bike. As you can imagine, that thing is pretty important, so we will spend a little bit more time talking about that in a second. So this is what we're working with right now, and instead of testing it around here, I'm actually gonna take it down into town. I probably could fit this thing in the back of my van unfolded, however, let's talk about the folding functionality quick. Now this XP did show up fully assembled. All I really had to do was take off some zip ties, some packing foam and stuff like that, and then sort of unfold it into the configuration that you're seeing it in now. I did already test this a little bit and I'll give my first impressions in a second, but this is going to be the first time that I am folding it back up into its smallest form factor. So now the first thing I'm going to do, I guess, is drop down these handlebars. There's a little latch in the front here that you simply pull down on and they can fold to the side, right like that. The seat is completely removable if you wanted to take that out. I think I'm gonna leave it in place for now though. And then there's this big hinge in the middle. It has a little open slide on it. So I'll push that forward, pop that. And now the entire thing folds up. Guess I should put the kickstand up for this. And there you have a folded up bike. I think this thing would definitely fit in the trunk of most small cars. Even these pedals fold up too if you wanna make it just a little bit more compact. All right, let's load this thing in the van and head downtown. So it fits in there pretty well. I did end up taking the seat off of it for a second. And now the thing isn't all that heavy. I'd say it's probably like 55, 60 pounds. It's just really awkward to like pick up. 
You can sort of roll it behind you with this little like handle thing in the frame here, which is nice. And when you sit it down on the ground like that, there's actually a little bit of a bar underneath the front sprocket, so it's not actually sitting on anything that could get damaged. Now this is it in its completely folded up configuration. Now I'm gonna show you guys real time how long it takes to get this thing into its normal bike form. So I'll start with the seat, which is now wet from the grass. I already have ridden this thing, so I kind of know where I want that seat to be set. I'm actually gonna flip the handlebars up now. That way you guys can see this little lever action here. Simply clips into place like that. Now I'll sort of lift it up swing it open and lock that into place. Also the pedals. And now this thing's good to go. Now I'm gonna bring you guys a little bit of first person action with this one, starting with the key. This thing does have basically what I would consider like an ignition and it's sort of multifunctional as well. It took me a while to find this actually without looking at the user manual, but right here on the side is the charge port. And then just underneath that, because the battery is running through this main frame right here, there is a keyhole in the frame right here. So now I'll just do this by feel, but you put the key up in there like that. And if you turn it in one direction, you will notice on the frame here that that actually locks the battery into the frame. This thing is removable if you want to like hot swap batteries or if you just wanna throw a different one in, maybe you run into an issue with it. So that is actually locking the battery into the frame. And then if I turn it to the position where the key is not removable, I cannot pull this thing out, then that's how you know it is in the on position. Now here's another quick look at the controls from my perspective. Over here is where you control the electronics you got a up arrow a down arrow and then a mode button in the front if I press and hold that mode button you will see the screen come on and you get all of the information that you need right there up top we have the energy bar of course I did get this thing up to a full charge full charge from zero takes about I'd say maybe four to five hours you got the speed right here in miles per hour right now, which you of course can change. You have PAS, which is for the pedal assist mode. This goes from zero to five. And then down here, of course, you have the odometer and I already have 13 miles on it because since this thing is new, I figured I might as well test it and get a better understanding of what it is before I start making a video on it. So now let's get into the riding, but I'm not gonna be holding the camera the whole time like this. We're gonna switch to something a little different. All right, now we should be rocking. Check, check, can you guys hear me? Currently wearing my moto vlogging helmet setup. I figured this was appropriate to be talking to you guys while I ride this thing around. So we're gonna start in the regular bike mode. Just riding this thing like a normal bicycle, which you can do. So technically the range is going to be unlimited like this. Pedal assist is set to zero. I have seven speeds to select from right over here. And right now I'm in gear one. There's not much to talk about here. This is just like literally riding a bike. Gear two, I'm gonna bump all the way up to gear seven, and then we'll get an idea of a baseline for how fast this can go with seven gears and just me pedaling at a pretty normal rate. So here we are pedaling, pretty normal rate, nothing too crazy, not like a wild exercise, just sort of a normal commute, doing about, 11, 12 miles per hour. With the pedal assist mode set to zero, this throttle does not do anything. Pedaling is just normal and yeah, everything is as standard as can be. The tires feel pretty unique. Again, this is something that I was never really used to riding around on fat tire bikes like this, but it's pretty cool. Now, while we are at this stop sign, I will press up on this mode selection here. We're in pedal assist mode one now. This does now activate the throttle over here. So if I give this a little turn, we are moving without me even using the pedals. And we're already going 16, 17, 18, about 21-ish miles per hour right there. Disc brakes are obviously important on here. Brakes feel good as expected. Now, not only do you get the throttle, but the pedal assist is what this is actually for. So here I'm in gear seven and 
just with about one or two turns I am barely pedaling. This is a really hard feeling to convey on video but basically the best way to describe it would be it feels like I'm pedaling in gear 7 on a flat road like this and then once that pedal assist starts to kick in it basically feels like it completely downshifted to like one or two. I'm using little to no effort to pedal and as soon as I stop pedaling and apply the brakes the power stops. Now I'll press the mode button again, bump up into pedal assist mode two, and now that sensation will be much more apparent. Already it picks up the power almost instantly, and again, I'm like barely pedaling. It basically feels like the sensation you get when a chain pops. When the chain actually comes off a sprocket and you're just kind of like free pedaling, that is pretty much what it feels like, but while I keep my feet moving and pedaling, it's gonna provide that power. If I stop pedaling, it will stop, begin to coast, and then I can brake like normal. So you can use a combination of these two things as well. Now that I have it in a pedal assist mode, there really isn't a reason to ever downshift. If you're starting on a flat surface like this, for the most part, anyone can just sort of pedal and get moving a little bit. That way the motor has time to spool up. But if your legs are really tired for some reason, you can turn the throttle just a little bit, give you that little initial push, take your hand off the throttle, and then just be pedaling like normal. While I'm pedaling in assist mode two, I can also change the mode as I'm going. And just like that, the power picks up and I'm going much faster than I was. On the lower modes, like if I bump this back down to two or even one, you can feel a little bit of resistance, like the bike is assisting your pedaling, which is obviously the name of it. So if you're feeling a little bit of resistance, maybe you're going up a hill, you're feeling tired, you can simply bump up that assist, and now it sort of feels like you're downshifting. It takes some strain off your legs. While we're on a flat, nicely paved road here, I actually wanna test out how fast this thing will go with both just the throttle and then the pedal assist. They do say that when this thing is capped out for the throttle, it's gonna stop at around 20 miles per hour, which you guys have already seen that. So here we go, no pedaling at all, just throttle. Feels pretty damn close to like an electric motorcycle, electric scooter. There I'm doing 21.9, 22. 22 point all right so i'd say about 20 to 22 miles per hour which with no pedaling is great like really nothing to complain about there if you're commuting around a small town or even a city like where i'm at right now this bike is perfect you honestly would not need a car the speed limit as you can even see right here is only 25 miles per hour on most of these like town roads so definitely happy with the top speed so far on this now where things get a little bit different is with the actual mode selections on here so if i press and hold both of these buttons at the same time it will go into this sort of like menu selection. For this, up here, the bigger numbers will indicate what setting you're actually changing, and I just happen to know, it just timed out there. I just happen to know that 0, 1, P is to change the brightness. So here I'm on brightness three, hit it again, now it is completely off. I'll actually bump that up, maybe you guys will be able to see it a little bit easier. And then you can go through a bunch of different modes and change things, including like the units, if you want to switch it to kilometers. And the main important thing, which is a little bit weird to describe on video, but you can change the power output of the motor back here. So as this thing ships, it is technically a class two electric bicycle, which means it should be limited at around 20 miles per hour. The reason they do that is because there are some places where you cannot ride an electric vehicle like this that goes faster than that. So they give you the option to bump this thing up to a class three electric bicycle, and then it should give me the capabilities of doing 28 miles per hour while using that pedal assist. Now, if you guys know me, you know I like to go quick. So I already updated the settings in here. And if you end up riding one of these in the future, chances are you can look at the manual and figure it out. It was very easy to do. So now let's head back out to the road pedal assist mode five and see what the top speed is like this. 
already this thing <laughs> is quick i am like barely barely pedaling and i'm doing 19 20 miles per hour actually i have to slow down and obey traffic laws now i'm gonna see if i can pedal quickly here while this thing is assisting my pedaling and get a little bit of resistance to try to get a top speed on here 23 24 25 26 27 28 <laughs> So if you want to go 28 miles per hour, <laughs> there you guys can see on a nicely paved road, completely flat. Rider weight of myself right now is at like 180. I can get all the way up to 28 miles per hour. The only thing is you're already going so fast and there are seven gears. So for you to be able to pedal and keep up with what the motor is already doing, you're pedaling pretty quickly. It's not that strenuous. It's just like a kind of like a cardio workout really. All right, so apologize for the heavy breathing for the next couple of minutes, but we're gonna do a hill test. This is where I test all of my electric skateboards. We are in the most powerful mode. Just pedaling a little bit here. Don't need to use the throttle at all. And I mean, this is as close to effortless as you could possibly get. Moving over to the steeper part of the hill. So if I'm using just throttle, it can make it. But when you pedal and use that pedal assist, I feel like you're actually getting more power out of it because you are adding a little bit of your own. And this hill is definitely something that I would not want to ride a bicycle up. I actually have led a foot race around here on a bicycle on these exact hills and it sucked. <laughs> I would not want to do that again. On something like this though, it's really effortless. There we go top of the hill the bike is nice and balanced as you can see you can ride it without any hands and yeah that definitely gives me the confidence of having all of the power that I need you may have noticed that the energy bar there was kind of fluctuating a little bit and with the 12 or 13 miles that I had put on here with my initial testing that seems to be pretty normal I'm assuming it's taking a readout in real time so obviously if you're sucking up a lot of power going up a hill the readouts gonna be a little bit lower but I did put 13 miles on, and when the bike was sitting stationary, not being ridden, it was at half. So in theory, with the way I was riding and all the hills that I was on and everything, you could probably go 25, 26 miles. But again, the reason there is so much fluctuation with the advertising of products like this is because the range could technically be unlimited depending on how much you're willing to pedal. So I'm probably not gonna end up riding this thing 25 to 50 miles today, but with my testing so far, I would definitely put money on this bike going at least 25 miles, and those are in some pretty hilly conditions. In my initial testing, I was riding a lot of back roads, and I mean, stuff like this too, look at this. I am like hardly, hardly pedaling at all and we're doing 25 miles per hour. I was really skeptical about electric bicycles and pedal assist as far as the technology goes, but it's pretty cool. I'm definitely warming up to the idea of something like this. Honestly, I probably didn't even have to throw this thing in the back of my van and bring it downtown. I could have rode it into town if I wanted to. So now when you're comparing this to some other electronic rideables, one thing that you are gonna be missing out on is regenerative braking. It would be kind of cool to see a company like this integrate something into that. Maybe if I push the throttle forward, like opposite of the acceleration, if that would provide some resistance and then you could gain back a lot of energy while coming down a hill like this, but the range is already super good on this thing, so I guess it's kind of unnecessary. Adding technology like that would probably bump the cost up a little bit, and you can't really beat disc brakes because this thing will absolutely stop on a dime as it is. So that covers a lot of the electronics, but how does this thing do as 
a bicycle. One thing that I noted earlier on that I'm actually glad exists is the shock absorbing seat under here. There's sort of like a little hydraulic thing underneath the seat which will suck up some bumps. The reason that's a nice touch is because as you guys can see this bike really has no suspension. It's sort of like a weird mixture of a fat tire bike and also sort of like a fixie city style bike. So the only real suspension that you're getting is from the seat, your legs and arms being in contact with the bike, and then of course these massive fat tires here. Supposedly they are like anti-flat. I don't know the technology behind tires like that, but I think aesthetically this thing looks pretty rad. And a little bit of tread on the tires that is here, it's going to allow you to sort of ride in places where you typically wouldn't want to take a skinny tire road bike. While we're looking at the bike from this perspective, another thing that I want to give Electric a thumbs up on are these fenders. These are metal fenders and everything is put together really nicely. One thing that they could have done and cheaped out on here is put plastic fenders on there that would have been really easy for them to do so i'm glad they went this route and made it seem like a more complete thought out project here you can also see the rack in the back supposedly holds 55 pounds i don't see any problem with me sitting on it like this i'm not going to say to carry a passenger on here but that is something that you could probably do they also provided a saddle bag which would sort of clip under here you could put like groceries in or something like that in my opinion, it kind of ruins the aesthetics of the entire bike. I think the thing looks pretty cool, unique, and interesting, so this is how this thing is going to live for now. Now let's keep it going. I've been riding this whole time and I don't even have my lights on, so to turn the lights on, press and hold the up button, and now you might be able to see the headlights on and the taillight is now on in the rear as well. You can also just see right here, it's indicated by showing that the lights are on. And speaking of other functionalities and modes on here, there's also something that I have not tested yet. I know it exists. I don't really have a use for it because of what it is, but let me find a hill quick and I will show you guys what I'm talking about. All right, so here I found a little bit of a hill. And like I mentioned, this is probably not a mode that I'm really gonna use all that much. So I'll show you by lifting the rear tire off the ground. Up front here, I'm going to press and hold the down button on the mode selection. I'm gonna lift the tire off the ground before I do this because when I press and hold that, it goes into a walk mode. This is basically like a hill assist mode and it will actually give you a little bit of power so you can walk the bike just like this without actually pushing it a whole lot. Like I said, this bike isn't super heavy. It's probably about 55 to 60 pounds, but maybe you're super tired or maybe you just don't have the strength to go on anymore and you need a little extra push. You're going up a hill similar to this, simply pop it into the walk mode and this thing will basically walk itself up a hill. Now I'm curious if I get on the bike, while it's in this mode, if I can just press and hold that again. Okay, yeah. And I'm right back into pedal assist mode. Here's actually one more thing that I'd like to try. Sitting at the bottom of a really steep hill, something like this here is pretty steep. Pedal assist mode one. I'm gonna try to pedal up this and I'm still feeling quite a bit of resistance. Bump it up while I'm moving and now there is significantly less resistance. One more, again, speed starts to pick up, and then I'll bump all the way up to mode five, and I am, again, barely pedaling now. It really feels like you're shifting down gears when you turn the pedal assist mode on. Just makes your life way easier. Where were bikes like this when I was a kid? So I think that covers a good deal of the functionality with this electric bike XP. Let's uh, ride it around just a little bit more. Kind of enjoying this actually. Typically I would stop an electric skateboard test after a while because feet, legs, everything gets a little rattled, but this is not bad. So I'm gonna keep riding and I'll check back with you guys in a couple seconds with some final thoughts. All right guys, back from my ride today. Second ride on the electric XP. And so far I've gone a total distance of just over 20 miles. Now I'd say that gives me a pretty good impression of what electric bikes and this one in particular are about. And I'm pretty happy to report that it's been a great experience so far. 
I really wasn't sure what to expect when getting on an electric bike because it's sort of like when I first got into electric skateboards. I had been skateboarding my entire life, so once I stepped foot on one of these things, I'm like, what, what do I do? What am I really looking for in an electric skateboard and is this thing for me? Like, what am I judging the value based on? And I was sort of that way with electric bikes. I mean, I've ridden bikes my entire life too, as most people do, and I really wasn't sure what to expect, but with the functionality that this thing gives you, the fit and finish of everything, it's definitely a really well thought out product and I'm a pretty big fan of it right from the start. I can absolutely see this thing being useful for people who live in a city or even like a small town where you guys saw me riding today. It's giving you power only when you really ask for it or need it. And other than that, you can still ride this thing like a normal bike. So because of that, I could definitely see this thing being even more fitting for a pretty rural type of situation as well. The one kicker, which I have not mentioned yet throughout this entire video is the value of this thing. If I were to just get on and ride this thing and then compare the riding experience and all of the specs, compare that to other electric rideables like skateboards and just anything else for that matter, in my head I personally would value this at probably around the $1,200 to $1,800 mark. It legit almost feels like an electric motorcycle, electric scooter because of the top speed there. But if we're playing like Price is Right and I had to guess, I would probably put a price of about, yeah, like 1800 on this thing. That is where I'm actually really surprised. So not only are you getting a bicycle, but it's completely foldable. You can store it really easy. You get some fat tires and it's electric on top of that. 28 miles per hour for at least 25 miles. This thing is valued at just $1,000, which really kind of threw me off. I was never really in the market for an electric bike because I always pictured them being really expensive, but something like this fits in more people's budgets than not. So that's obviously all very consumer-based and depending on your budget and your needs and whatever. So if you guys want to know anything else about the electric XP, check the link in the description down below for a detailed list of the specs and everything that they advertise on their site. And then if you have any more personal questions about my experience with this thing so far, you can let me know those in the comments down below and I will try to answer them as best as possible. Like I mentioned, this is my first electric bike, so I don't have a whole lot to compare this to, but overall I'm pretty satisfied with my first testing experience. And hopefully there will be more of these in the future. I know Electric has some other bikes in their line that look pretty interesting and there are quite a few other companies out there. So I guess we'll test some more in the future if you guys like this. If you do, slap a like on it. Consider clicking subscribe because I make new videos every week and that's gonna be all for today. So as always, thank you guys for watching and I'll talk to you in the next one.